everyone, my name is Whitney, I'm a registered nurse, and you're watching Nurse Life Wit, where we talk about all things nursing, life, and walking with Christ, and you see the title, so we're just going to get straight to the video. So, I feel like today in social media, we often hear so much about the toxicity, bullying, and straight up horror stories that goes on in nursing, and I feel like the entire field of nursing low-key gets a really bad rap for this. And although I feel like the awareness is very important, at the same time, I also feel like just focusing on just the negative can honestly be a deterrent and like a really big discouragement for potential future nurses who are looking to go into what I believe is a really amazing, viable career opportunity. But although I feel like we should talk about it, I also feel like that shouldn't be the only narrative about nursing that we're putting out there. I feel like it's also important to share about the positive sides of nursing, the positive workplace environments, the good scenarios that are out there in the world of nursing. And although I have had my own experiences with a little toxicity in the workplace, which I will talk about here because we gotta give you both sides, at the same time, I will say, for the most part, I have been incredibly blessed with some amazing workplaces, great cultures, great positive work environments that I felt were healthy. And even if there was a little toxicity, it either got nipped in the bud or fizzled out or didn't persist and fester. So I just wanna share some of my own personal experiences in the workplace so that hopefully I can just give you an example of like faith restored in nursing and hopefully just give you a little bit of hope that you too could hopefully find a really great, healthy workplace environment too. Okay, so story number one, as promised, I'm first gonna share an example of a little bit of toxicity I experienced in the workplace that kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit, but um, the Lord saw it through, but we'll talk about it here. So basically, there was a situation at one of my previous hospitals where we have a bladder scan protocol. And it's just in place to make for sure that our patients are not experiencing urinary retention, which is basically what happens when your bladder is full of pee, but you can't pee it out yourself, even if you have the urge. And we don't want that to happen because if your bladder gets too full, then that can actually lead to like your bladder rupturing and that's a bad situation. So in order to prevent that, we have a policy in place. And basically the policy at my hospital was that if the patient had not peed at least 240 milliliters within an eight hour time span, then we need to go ahead and do a little bladder scan, make sure they're not retaining urine. Or if they had had a fully catheter removed, which is a catheter in your bladder to help drain your urine. If we had removed that, right after we remove it, they need to pee within six hours. And if they don't, then we gotta go ahead, bust out the bladder scanner, scan the bladder, see how much is in there. And the machine can estimate how much fluid is in there. But basically how the protocol works is that there's like a parameter for like, if it's within like a certain number range, then you have to go ahead and catheterize that patient, meaning you like put a tube up there and drain all the pee out. Anyhow, another reason that you may have to bladder scan somebody even before that time frame, like the six or the eight hour time frame, is if that patient has discomfort in their bladder, if they have the urge to pee but they can't pee, or if the bladder is distended, meaning like it's like poking out, like it's so full it's poking out and you can see it then that would cause for you to have to bladder scan prior to the six or eight hours. Now that that is all explained, basically I forget the exact details of the story, but I believe the patient that I had this day had had their Foley catheter removed. And of course that means they have to pee within six hours, otherwise we got a bladder scan, right? So of course I'm watching it, monitoring it, seeing if they're peeing with Ujibu, all that stuff. The patient actually couldn't tell me if they needed to pee or not because they were confused. So I'm just continuously monitoring their pure work output, seeing if they check in their pad, make see if they peed or not, all that stuff, great. Anyways, we are now at the five hour mark since the patient's fully had been removed. Even though we're at the five hour mark now, we still got an hour to go. This patient still was not exhibiting any sense of discomfort. They didn't express any urge to pee and their bladder was not distended. So I'm like, okay, cool, great. And mind you, this was at the end of a very busy med surge day shift as it always is. And I'm here just running around with my head cut off, trying to make sure all my tasks are completed, all my meds are passed, all my dressing changes are changed, all my tasks are charted and everything is documented and just tying up all my loose ends so I could clock out on time. Because this hospital is very big on not accruing unapproved overtime, which basically means you clocking out late and now you are getting paid like double time or time and a half because you didn't finish your stuff on time. And how you feel about that, we could talk about that in another video at another time, that's not the point of the story. But anyhow, the way it was though at my hospital, it was like, if you are running behind, you're drowning and it's nearing the end of your shift, 
you need to call your manager, call the break nurse, you gotta call somebody and get it figured out because don't be clocking out 30 minutes late every day. So that's kind of like how it was. So there's kind of like a lot of pressure on me to like make sure I clocked out on time. At least I felt the pressure. Anyways, as my shift is ending, I know that in my handoff report to the next nurse that'll be coming on, I know that I have to relate to her to watch out for this patient's urine output because we're climbing up close on that sixth hour and she'll need to bladder scan that patient soon if she doesn't pee. Anyway, so in this moment of time, the next shift will literally be here like any minute now like it is almost time for them to like walk through those doors so i literally have like two minutes left in my shift before we start handing off right but in these last two minutes what do i see lo and behold standing in the hallway which is never ever in the place you need it when you need it the bladder scanner the infamous bladder scanner and if you know anything about floor nursing or just nursing in general you will know that that bladder scan will get swept up so quick and be gone and nowhere to be found in a hot second so i'm like bet i got two minutes the bladder scanner is right there let me just go ahead do the next shift nurse a quick little solid let me just go ahead and get this bladder scan knocked out the way so that's one less task she has to do we can see where we're at with the bladder situation she'll have the information she needs and then she can not spend the first half of her shift trying to track down a bladder scanner if she needs it so in my head i'm like okay bet you know teamwork make the dream work i technically don't even have to do this on my shift because it's before the required time frame for the protocol but hey if i can help even a little bit with the last two minutes that i have i will absolutely do that anyways long story long the nurse gets there, I'm giving her a report, I tell her the situation about the patient, but okay, guess what? I had a quick moment at the end of the shift, and I went ahead and scanned the bladder just so we could kind of see where we're at with the situation. And you know, I just wanted to get that out the way so you could, you know, take it from there. But anyways, turned out the number that I had gotten when I bladder scanned the patient was in the parameter where our protocol requires you to drain the urine with the catheter. But she technically still had another 30 minutes or so in that time window for her to void spontaneously, meaning pee on her own, before we catheterize her. And again, I don't remember the exact numbers. I really wish I remembered. But I think it might have been maybe like 360 milliliters in the bladder. I'm not 100% sure. But whatever number it was, I know it was a decent amount. But I know for a fact it wasn't anything egregious. Anyway, so I let the nurse know this. And she's like, oh. 360 milliliters, well, that needs to be drained. And I was just like, oh, well, like, you know, it's still like 30 minutes before like our protocol, you know, time framing. It hasn't quite been the full six hours yet since the Foley's been removed. But even though it was early, I just happened to see that the bladder scanner was available right there. So I just went ahead and scanned her. And she's just like, okay, so you scanned her. You got that number. The number is above the parameter to drain her. So you need to drain her before you leave. And I'm just like, me, I'm low-key still a newish nurse at this time. I think I would just hit two years. You know, I'm still trying to find my way. So in my head, I'm just thinking like, first of all, rude. The second of all, dang, like, man, I didn't realize that that was a number that I maybe I should have immediately, you know, went ahead and drained. Maybe I should have like, you know, made for sure I drained it before I left and, you know, took care of that right away. So I'm like, ah, dang, okay, like, you know, maybe I could do better. That's what's going on in my head. So I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I still have to give report to the other nurses for my other patients, but I will try to get that done before I leave. And she's like, mm, okay. And it's like, not very nice at all. Anyways, you know how it is in med surge when you're trying to give report to three or four different nurses, assignments all over the place. I'm trying to track down who was who because I don't know nobody's names because I just floated to this unit today. I'm waiting on my nurse to get done getting report from another nurse so that I can give report to that nurse and just the whole entire shenanigans, the whole hoopla, right? So basically, by the time I track everybody down, get all of the reports finished, it is like past time to clock out. But I'm like, I'm a woman of my word, so I'm like, if I said I'm gonna drain this bladder, I'm gonna drain this bladder, right? But then again, there's that clock out on time issue. And I'm really, again, not trying to clock out late and accrue this unapproved overtime, so I'm like, well, let me get it approved. So I just happened to see one of the managers on the unit, and I'm like, oh, hey, bet, let me talk to you real quick. So I explained to her the situation, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I know it's past time to clock out, but is it okay if I just stay? real quick put this catheter in before i leave we'll do it to woo and the manager just stops me like girl no like pass it on to the nurse and you go home and i'm like oh dang you sure like i don't mind i can do it real quick before i go it's gonna be like real fast and she's like no no you need to clock out so i was like oh okay homegirl is not about to be happy about this 
So I go, I check on the nurse, I let her know what the manager said. So as expected, homegirl was indeed upset. She gave me the meanest stink eye. And in my head, I'm just thinking like, homegirl, like, do you think I did this on purpose? I was literally actually trying to do her a favor by getting the bladder scan done early. And she's acting like I'm over here being some lazy nurse trying to skip out on work and just dump it all on her shift. When that was literally the exact opposite of my intentions, I was literally just trying to help. And that really made me feel a type of way and just really bothered because I know my character, I know I work hard and I know I try to always do my absolute best and I felt like it just all got pooped on by her. And that just really had me feeling bad. So I'm just driving home real bothered, but you know, I get home, I just vent it out to my family. It's the weekend, I'm off. I enjoy my life, enjoy my family, and kind of just get over it and forget about it. Until um, I come to work that, you know, next week. So, you know, I'm just finishing up my shift, getting ready to clock out. And then I see my direct manager and she comes by and kind of pulls me to the side like, hey, can I talk to you real quick? And I was just like, oh Lord, what did I do? You know, cause I'm forgetting about the whole situation. She's just like, hey, so I heard about the situation that happened last week. And initially I'm like, huh? First I was just confused because she wasn't involved with it. It was like the other units manager that I, you know, spoke to about and tried to forgot the situation with. So I'm just thinking like, oh dang, like what's she about to say about this? Like, is she gonna scold me? Like what I do wrong? Like, oh man. You know, you know like when somebody's like, hey, can we talk? You're just like waiting for them to like, say it, say it, please hurry up, say it. It felt like an eternity before she was about to say what she was gonna say. But anyways, she was like, yeah, so I heard about the situation that happened with so-and-so and I just wanna let you know that that was really not okay. And I'm like, okay. okay. And she keeps talking and she's like, I just wanted to let you know that I talked to that nurse and I told her that what she tried to do, having you stay over your shift and put in that catheter was completely not okay and not the expectation around here. And I'm sorry that happened. That should not be the case around here. I know you work so hard and I know you try to do your best. So if you can't get something done, that is okay. This is a 24 hour job. So you just pass it on, okay? Just keep doing your best. I know you're a good worker. And if you have any other problems like this, just let me know, okay? You could talk to me. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Like the amount of love and support I just felt like just pouring inside of my body was just like, could literally bring a tear to my eye. Like the fact that I didn't even have to say a word and just got completely vindicated in this situation was just so amazing and just such a blessing. And it truly meant the world to me. Also, what that situation showed me too is that as a Christian, I really don't have to be out here trying to vindicate myself, get the last word, give that nurse a piece of my mind or anything like that. But all I really need to do is just continue to stand strong in my own character, keep giving my best effort, and then allow God to do the vindicating for me. Because in this case, he sure enough did. And I really am so grateful for that. Anyhow, so that is a story that started off a little bit toxic, but ultimately turned out to be what I believe was a great display of a supportive and healthy workplace scenario. And I did my part. I did share the toxic story that I did have. And I do have a couple more, which I probably won't get into into this video. Not even a couple more. I think I just have like one more that's like toxic, toxic. Maybe I'll make that a part two. But now that I shared my toxic story, I have like another two or three really positive stories that really, when I think back on it, I'm like, man, faith and humanity restored or faith and nursing restored, at least for me, like these moments just touched me so much. So the next situation that I had was also at my previous hospital or one of my previous hospitals. I've had like three so far. But anyways, basically in this situation, it was again, end of my shift. I was working evening shift this time. So all of your meds kind of fall at the end. It's cause I was working like 3 PM to 11 PM. And we had all these like, I think like 10 o'clock meds or something like that. And basically I had all these little final task to finish up. I had an IV antibiotics to hang. I had to transport a patient to another room. I had to like, you know, make sure everyone was clean and make sure my charting was done, all that type of thing. And in my head, again, this is me in med surge. This is me and five patients. And this is me, uh, I think I wasn't even a year old yet. I was still like six months into my nursing life. Anyhow, so your girl was just like overwhelmed. And of course, as I'm trying to boop, 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 what do you know, IV is leaking. It's the only IV I got. The patient needs these antibiotics. I have all stuff to do. And of course, this IV is not working. I need to put in a new one. I can't just 
leave this patient here with no IV and you know, I don't wanna hand off to the next shift like that. So I'm just like, oh Lord, like, and literally as I'm like stressing out about all this, why does this coworker, this male, love this man. It's the perfect timing ever. This coworker walks by me and he must've just seen it all over my face because he was just like, what do you need mama? What can I do? Let me help you. Next thing you know, like this man goes in there, pops the IV in and next thing I know, he just walks past me as I'm like trying to finish everything. And he's like, IV's in, antibiotics are running. And I was just like, thank you so much. Like the amount of like burden and pressure and just like angst I had inside of my body just, even think about this broken IV, last minute meds, I, IV antibiotics overdue. And the way he just took that and lifted it up off of me, unprovoked. I didn't even ask for the help. He just knew, he saw me, he knew I was in need. He stepped in and just took care of it. And literally a healthy work and place environment is literally healthy for your body. He literally took stress out of my body. And I was just so grateful and so thankful for that moment. So yeah, that was another gold star that I feel like nursing had in my book. And another wonderful, wonderful situation that I had was also comes from amazing coworkers. And this was actually at my most recent hospital. Well, not my most recent hospital, but the hospital that I work at now. I remember I'm new here. I just became an ICU nurse. So basically I had the situation where, you know, I'm in the ICU, I get this patient. He's kind of like a relatively new admin. I'm in there, I'm assessing him, talking to him, asking him questions, and then I ask him a question and he like doesn't respond. And I'm just like, okay, so I'm looking at him. He's looking at me and I'm looking at him and I ask him the question again. And he's just looking at me and I'm like, okay, like, you know, he's finding it, he's finding it. And next thing you know, this man just, yeah, <laughs> like literally all over the bed, all over the floor, all over me. And literally before you could hear it splat on the ground, there was three other nurses already inside of the room. One nurse is literally handing me a vial of Zofran with the syringe and the flush. Another nurse is over here just throwing down towels and already got uh, the janitors on the line. And then another nurse is like calling up to have somebody send me down some new scrubs. And when I walked out that room, I was just like, I love y'all real bad, like real bad. Like the way I just felt so supported. I literally did not even ask for help. It's like it splat and next thing I know, a whole gang of nurses in the room. The other thing too is that not only did I not like say, oh, hey, help, but the curtain was closed so they didn't even see it. Like they were so in tune that they heard just the splat and they immediately came to help. They didn't even, oh, you good? No, they just came in there, whoop, whoop, towels, towels, old friend, call it up, you get new scrubs. It was great. Again, faith in nursing, humanity restored. Another gold star for nursing in my book. And then lastly, one more thing that I'll share that was such a really wonderful, great, positive experience. It's like one and a half. Anyways, so again, here in my ICU, I'm kind of new. At this point, I'm like still low-key, fresh off of orientation. And mind you, I've only been on my own since January. This is March now. So it's probably still January at this point. So I was really fresh off of orientation for real. And it was a long night because I'm trying to learn this new ICU workflow. I'm trying to like get my timing down, my charting, my task and mapping it all out. And even just being night shift now than when I was day shift before, like all this type of thing. And of course, here I am, shift is over. I got a little poop load of charting to still do mind you we're supposed to clock out by like 8 a.m we do have like a few minute grace period but girl it is like 8 45 a.m i'm at the nurse station literally here like panic charting because again i look you got a little like that's still like angst in me from my previous hospital where they were real on it about you no know, unapproved overtime so i was just like Ugh! and next thing you know of course as i'm here panic charting I see the day shift manager walking by. I'm like, oh no. I really don't want her to like walk by, see that I'm still there like 45 minutes, dang near an hour past the time to clock out. I don't want her to like scold me about my time management and what's taking you so long, why are you still here, what do we do? So all that's going through my head. And I'm just like, here, still panic charting. And of course she sees me, makes eye contact, walks up to me and she's like, ah, you're still here? Don't worry, it happens to all of us. Trust me, it'll get better. And I was just like, what? Instead of coming here, scolding me, asking me why I'm still here, 
and telling me that I need to be better, what's wrong with the time management? You just came here and validated what I'm going through, shared like empathy or sympathy, whatever it was, and offered me encouragement and support. The way she went out of her way and did that and said that, left no mean comments, didn't like side eye me or woo 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 and say that and start talking to somebody else. Like, no, like she just came and unprovokedly just offered her support. And that just meant so much to me in that moment. Cause at the time I truly was like panicking, stressing out, beating myself up for not managing my time better and all that type of thing. And the way she just came and went out of her way and just lended that support to me, meant the world to me. And it and just really just took that weight that was on my chest and lifted it up and just allowed me to just walk out of that hospital just like light and free. Cause you know how you'd be finishing a shift and it was kind of like a hard shift or a rough shift. You have that like hard feeling inside your chest and you're just thinking of all the ways you suck and you're driving home. No, she literally took that, lifted it off of me and allowed me to go home and be happy and peaceful. And that was just such a blessing to me. And I'm just so happy to have a manager that's just so supportive and kind in that way. And again, another gold star for nursing in my book. And one last, last, last thing I'll share is again, comes from management and comes from this new hospital I'm at. Um, for some reason, I had to like fill out a time correction sheet because I might have clocked out wrong or whatever, something like that. But that those sheets are inside the manager's office. And when I go in there after my shift, the managers, they're doing all of their handoffs. So it's the day shift managers, the night shift managers, the assistant managers, the charge nurses, they're all in there. And one of the managers, as I'm walking in, she sees me and she's like, ah, oh, Whitney, how are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm okay. She's like, how's it going? How are you settling in? I'm like, you know, I, I think so far it's okay. Like, you know, everybody's really great, really supportive. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad about that. And she's like, yeah, no, you're doing great. Trust me, you work so hard. You're doing so good. Like, I'm telling you, you're doing a really good job. And I was just like, thank you. Like, you just unprovokedly gave me praise and reassurance and just like, I'm really big on words of affirmation because clearly I kind of think a lot about what other people are thinking of me and I'm always trying to do the right thing, which would woo, and I'd be like real hard on myself. So to have somebody like unprovokedly just like speak life into me and just, and just like validate me and my efforts means the world to me. And I am just so grateful and thankful for that. And again, another cold star for nursing in my book, because this is literally exactly what I prayed and asked God for when it came to a new position, a new learning environment, a new place to get this new skill. And he literally delivered it in like the most specific ways. And for that, I'm so grateful. And I just really wanted to share my experience because I kind of just wanted to offer like real life, tangible situations that you guys can, you know, hear about and consider when it comes to this crazy, mean, bullying world of nursing and see that it's not all like that. There are healthy, great places out there that you can land in. Of course, no place is perfect, but if you just seek God out, submit your request to him in prayer, and just be the type of contribution to the workplace that you want to see, then it's possible. It really is possible. But anyhow, that is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. And also, 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 I would love to hear your uh, faith in nursing humanity restored moments too. So if you could share those in the comments, I would really enjoy reading that. And I'm sure other people in the world need to see that too. So please leave a comment and tell me about your faith in nursing restored moments too. But that's all for now. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And oh, don't forget to subscribe too if you'd like to hear more. But that's all. See ya.